Alrighty, so we have we completed the flight suit uniform for our Ghostbuster outfit. Next up, we have the Motorola MT500. So this is the walkie-talkie that Venkman and the boys used to communicate. And what we're gonna do is we have all the parts. So this is a very much a multi-part multi print. We are going to start assembling uh, basically all that we can. Um, I don't know if I've got enough time this evening or, you know, uh, in general. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We're going to see if we got the right parts first. Um, so I'm probably going to walk over to, to the wall of parts. I've got organizer full of screws over here. We need to start assembling. Um, first thing I think I want to do is I've got this antenna. So it's one of those short stubby, <clears throat> excuse me, short stubby antennas. Basically it's a wooden dowel with a hole drilled out in the bottom for the screw. And it's dipped in liquid plastic. So Plasti Dip, this stuff is awesome. Uh, I've never used it before. I've always wanted to. And this is, this is perfect. Look how smooth that is. Basically, and you can see there's, there's like three variations. There's three steps. One, two, three. Basically, dipped it, dipped it again, but not all the way. And then dipped it again and again and again. Uh, this thing's probably got like five or six layers on it. Um, actually, more like six or eight layers probably. But it made that perfect, just hanging it upside down left it left the uh uh liquid plastic to sort of pull at the top so that's perfect so we've got a hole in the top here of this piece we're going to mount the antenna here and then uh we're going to start assembling uh actually what i could probably do is the front plate here yeah i think we want to do the front plate first it fits in and just sort of snaps together it has a raised ridge on this front piece here. So what we're gonna do is, here, let's tilt that down a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. We're just gonna hit this with some CA. We'll put a little dab in each corner. Maybe along the edge. Because this part here is not coming apart. At least not intentionally. We want this to stay on here pretty much for good. And that's why, unfortunately, I already did all the painting, or at least the majority of the painting, prior to making this video. So we're going to... put too much, too many fingerprints all over this if I can avoid it. Get some paper towel here, wipe that off. All right. Go press this down. Luckily, Crazy Glue CA Cyanoacrylate does not take too long to set up. But I need to I need to get some pressure on this. So what I'm going to do is I've got a couple of metal blocks. We're going to let that sit. Uh, what I'm going to do is since I used a wooden dowel for this antenna, I think what I'm going to do is find a screw that would just about fit. Now, luckily, the person who designed this particular model really did the smart thing here, and they put holes all the way through 
in some spots so that you could easily easily assemble this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna make that. We're gonna make this work. But first we're gonna bore this out just a tiny, tiny bit. So I need I need a drill bit that would just barely fit inside of this hole. And we're just going to make this a little bit wider. Just because I don't want to split the plastic. split the plastic but I'd also want this thing to fit through here yeah, it's still not quite it's better we're gonna step it up just a little bit That's why this is why we're starting with the antenna first because this one's got a very odd placement and I'm not exactly sure of how far I'm going to be able to get this into the yeah I think we'll be able to twist it a good bit but I'm more worried about the plastic because I don't want to split the split the frame of this thing. So let's try this again. Just a tiny bit. Sorry, I know I keep looking off to the wrong side. There we go. That is a lot easier to get through now. need to anchor this side with the screwdriver and twist this on and we'll just let it squeeze from the top to the bottom and that's it it is what it is um, is it slightly to the side? <laughs> Maybe. Um, do I care? Yeah, yeah, I care. Um, am I going to try to take it apart and get it perfect? Mm -hmm. Nope, we're going to go with that. So, uh, I think that pretty much puts the antenna on. Uh, we'll keep the screwdriver handy. We may need it. All right, um, so let's see what we got here. For this, yep, this looks like it is mostly set up. Put a little more pressure on here. So we've got the front and the first layer of the back piece assembled. Oh, it, while I'm waiting for the glue to dry a little bit here. So what I did was uh, I made a label, uh, took an actual Motorola label, found out the, the model, 
uh, replicate, found the fonts, uh, or the font uh, close enough to that and made a stencil for Cricut and cut out some white vinyl, placed it on there and then covered it with a layer of Mod Podge just so that the, uh, just so that it doesn't accidentally come up. And while the Motorola I think should actually be in blue, uh, I didn't have blue vinyl, white's just fine. It, as long as you could see the model, uh, the make and model, I, I figured that's enough. For my earlier video, it's Friday night and it's beer clock. All right, so this will eventually be the next layer on here, but while we are here, we need to add on a few more parts. So on this particular walkie-talkie, there is actually two layers uh, or two pieces on the side. This one is uh, basically metal contacts that were for add-ons like a headset, that sort of thing. That's gonna fit right in here. Um, luckily, we just need to give it a little squirt of CA. Just enough for this sucker to stay in there. We'll hold that in place while we're holding that. I can check a text message from the wife. This piece is going to fit right on top of that, and so far it's looking like it's a pretty tight fit, which is good. Uh, I'm still going to put a little bit of glue here, and because I can't put it around the edge on the inside, I'm going to put a tiny dot right there, line this up, and we'll push it down on top. Perfect. Oh God, yeah, look at that. That is, that is awesome. Uh, this, this was a great design. I ended up purchasing this design off of Cults 3D, I think. Um, whoever had modeled this or uh, whoever sold the model for it. Um, model's good. I really like this. Um, here's why, another thing. Inside here, this is the uh, this is the button to depress when you're talking. We're gonna make it work. So they have a little quarter inch hole uh, indentation for a spring. This is awesome. And so here's the here's the trigger piece. So this guy also has a little indentation on the back. Make sure that fits in there and. We've got a, just a piece of silver wire. Um, I don't have a lot of, I really wanted, um, I thought I had some brass rod that would fit in here, but um, we'll just go with this. I'm gonna snip this off right at the edge, but look at this. A functional print, I freaking love this. This is awesome. So we've just got a tiny piece of, yeah, make sure this is actually going through. Yeah, that's that's going through. So we're gonna let me get a. Oh yeah. All right, we're gonna get a. Sorry, I didn't want that flying at my eyeball, but I needed to trim off just a tiny bit more. Right, and we're close, we're very close. Uh, let's get, let's get this guy here.
We're just filing down the ends. Oh. Perfect. And then, there we go. Oh my God, I love this. I really do. The button actually, the, oh, my pin fell out. <laughs> All right, so yeah, we I, I kind of figured this. We're gonna need to put a little bit of glue here. Just to anchor this sucker in. Um, yeah, that should that should do it. Not a huge bit. We're gonna save this little piece of metal. There we go. Very good. All right. So there's the. Oof, I really need to put this on the thing. Okay. So there we got working. Oh, and we also have indentations on the top because we have little tiny knobs. Uh, what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to assemble these. You pay 20 bucks on Amazon and you get an entire box of parts. And what I want is something that will fit through this. So this is the top. Yes, the FDM printer actually was able to print the indentations. We'll, um, you know what? Um, let's, let's do a little paint here. Let's take... Second, I'm gonna do. Yeah, we're gonna take just a little bit of black, and we're gonna grab some water. And I can't tell you how much these are. These are so invaluable. And I just need like three, four, five at that drops of water. We just want to water down this paint. And this is just plain old acrylic. Works just fine. All right, and we're gonna take, yeah. nice and watered down. So it's just enough that it will give us some contrast here. And I think this would be a lot easier to wipe this off while we are, while we don't have the knobs attached. Oh yeah, this is, this is exactly what we need. I'm gonna do a few, another layer here. All right. And we are going to do a little bit of weathering on this once it's done because, yeah, it looks, it looks too new. And while a, a real Motorola MT500 is available on eBay, they're about 100 bucks, And that's even for non-functional. And the truth is, after 30-something years, a lot of these things really have not held up that well. So while I'm 3D printing it and the plastic is, you know, brand new, uh, it's PETG by the way, it's not um, PLA because I don't like my stuff melting in a hot car because uh, I do live in Georgia. 
I'm gonna make sure that the props that I make are actually gonna stand up to the heat. So there we go. We just made that a little darker where you actually see the uh, insets and emblems that are on there. Alrighty, so uh, we're, this is gonna line up on top here and there's an indentation so that we can have screw heads actually fit down in here. Look at this, this is, this is awesome. Uh, the next part is we got to find the right depth for these. So I need, yeah, I think this will work. So if we just put a little washer here and push, push a screw through from the other side and I need a metric. Metric Allen wrench, because these are three millimeter screws, and why am I blindly? These are M3s, which means, yep, they need an M2 Allen wrench. All right. I think that's still too, that's still too tall. Yeah, that's too tall. All right, so we've got some much smaller there we go. Much smaller M3s. Push this up from below. All right. And we'll see if this works. So we'll put a washer here just so that we've got a little bit of a buffer between painted plastic and painted plastic. just let this sucker twist on oh that is awesome all right so they're not intended I think to turn but they do and so we will We will make use of that. We'll turn them a little bit. So basically I'm not cranking it all the way down tight. I'm just leaving enough room so that if I want to twist the knob, I can. So same thing here. We're gonna put this through. And this one. Doo -doo -doo. Pardon me one second, I'm gonna check the 3D printer. Okay, needed to uh, cancel that print. That was not working out right. The first layer was going down like crap and that is a, uh, that is a print that I'm probably gonna run overnight. It's about eight hours for that piece that's going now. And while I'm comfortable running it overnight, I got enough safeties on it and all that. I can't, I can't trust that if the first layer looks like crap. Uh, this is a very large piece. All right, so there we go. We've got these three knobs can be turned. That's awesome. You can turn them into, uh, turn them at set uh, points. All right, we've got a little uh, switch that goes on top. So we're gonna glue that in. So 
So this is the, uh, the power switch, maybe? Not sure. We're just gonna glue that sucker in first. And then we're going to make sure that these things actually fit, jeez. Yeah, that fits. Uh, I think I will shave just a tiny bit off of this. Just the edges. All right, that fits a little better. It felt like it was kind of buckling in the middle. All right, hang on one second. Yep, just checking the printer. All right, looks good now. All right, so we need a little bit of glue on this. And I'm gonna re-emphasize, reinforce is what I was trying to say. Reinforce the corners. Edge. I don't want it anywhere near where the holes are. I'll just put it across the top and the edge. Oops, and drop. That's okay. We've got more than our fair share of paint splatters on this mat. All right. CA cures faster with the presence of water vapor. Breath treatment there. All right, there we go. We've got <laughs> twistable knobs. This is, I love this. The knobs actually turn. Not that I plan to turn them all that much, but that's awesome. But they actually twist. And we got our button on the side, which depresses and springs back. Label on the front. Uh, this, I love this. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite builds so far, so let's see if we can't keep this going. All right. So this, this is where we start getting into, we've got two flat surfaces. I think what I'll do is I'll glue them together and, oh, is that where this goes? Aha! That's, okay. I was like, where, I printed this piece and I could not figure out for the life of me, where did this thing go? It actually anchors the back plate. That, okay, that makes perfect sense now. All right, let's put, uh, put a little glue there. Double check that this fits. The holes look like they line up. Yep. All right, so we'll need some screws that will fit through 
all the way. But what I think we'll do first is we'll put a dab of glue around the perimeter, make sure that this thing really gets cemented in here. Again, this is one of those cases of uh, this shouldn't come apart. No user serviceable parts inside, really. So we want this to be sealed up tight and leave it at that. We will still connect it physically with screws. But there's no reason why we can't run a bead of glue around the edges and make sure that this is firmly in place. Ah, it's on my finger. Yeah, see it's seeped through the side, dang it. All right. Try and get this off before it dries. That's where you're fighting Fighting the time, fighting carrying time. All right. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing. Um, the amount of time that I spent working on that 3D printer to get it working cor correctly, oh my God, uh, that thing was stuff was not adhering to the bed. It was so inconsistent with whether or not parts would print correctly or even stay flat. But recently, since I changed to a glass bed, all hail the glass bed. I mean, seriously. All right, and then for the bottom, I am really not sure which way this goes in. And frankly, I don't care. It's supposed to be like charging like I think the, the battery contacts and we'll probably, I'll go back in here maybe with some gold instead of silver uh, and we'll paint those gold. But for now, we're gonna go with glue. We'll just we'll stick some glue in there and make sure this is solid. Yeah, there's a few things like you see right there. It, didn't, the layers didn't quite print right, but honestly, if it's too perfect, it's not going to look right. So I think, I think having some imperfections in it just makes it look the part. Uh, let's see. Oh, last. Something I found on the web. According to no, Alexa. Stop it. I don't know what she was doing. Um, it's supposed to be like a little, uh, one of those little coin slot things. I think what I'll do is there is a indentation. There's one here and one here. I think I will make it go across. Just put a dab of glue there. And we'll make sure that when this goes in here, that it stays pointed to one of these, one of these marks. I don't know which one would, I don't know which one would actually be correct, but you see there's one there and a mark there. Usually one is open, one is closed. I don't assume that righty tighty is correct. So if it's horizontal, that would be the closed position. And so that is, then that's good, yeah. We'll make that silver. I'm pretty certain it's silver uh, for that because in the pictures, this part was silver. The front and the back appeared to be all black. Hang on, I'm gonna check the printer. Yeah, printer looks way better now. Okay, um, so now we've got a box full of box full of screws. Uh, 
we're gonna find the right screw. Don't need these. So yeah, this thing just empty cavity on the inside. There's really nothing that's gonna go in there. And I could hide something in there. Nah. All right, so we want the back to essentially bolt on. So I think that if we use screws that would normally go all the way through, we just let it thread right through the plastic. There we go, get it started and let it go through the back piece, the back plate, the first back layer, and should anchor itself into that silver uh, layer. There's So there's four layers to this thing. The very front, the very back, and then two middle layers. And I think, yeah. Oh, that's in there, look at that. That looks, that looks real. So yeah, we're so we're gonna anchor it in. Let's anchor it in about that far, so it'll go all the way through. We'll get it started. think I'm going to have time tonight. Uh, it is kind of late for me anyways. There, by the time I'm done with this much. Um, I think what I will do is we'll do another build log. I've got a roll of black leather here. This thing has a belt holster and while the normal belt hol holsters I think were made of plastic, after 30 years, I've learned that uh, most of the folks who have found them online, they just, they're, they're dry rotted. They just, they have not held up after 30 years of storage or wherever the hell they're at. So I'm just going to make something from scratch and we're just going to live with it. <clears throat> I don't think it's going to be that bad. Um, the holster basically extends from here, sort of wraps around, uh, comes up the back, and then about at the back, uh, there's some rivets, and I've got plenty of fasteners for leather and nylon webbing. Uh, we can make this work. So we will basically make a holster that will go on the belt for this costume. And we'll just, we'll do it with that. I think if I wet form it, uh, wet it and then bend it and let it dry uh, with a little bit of heat, I think it will mostly keep its shape. Or at least that's my hope. Because I've seen some 3D printable holsters, but honestly, if I could do the whole thing in leather, that would be great. Because the other thing I was going to do is it's stamped with a Motorola. Well, first off, there's a there's a snap right here uh, on the holster uh, that would go there. And then there's a Motorola logo across the bottom. What I'd like to do is, since I've got the file that made this, I can extrude that into a uh, 3D print. And I think what I can do is basically make a stamp. And so once I have the leather wet, I can stamp in the logo and it will look pretty much like it should, like a real product. Sorry, this is... All right. All right, there we go. And... All right, so while we've still got a little bit of 
black paint, we're going to We're going to do some weathering. So just darken some of these little crevices. Like Karate Kid here, wax on, wax off. Yeah, makes such a difference. Mm-hmm. It just it's too clean it's just too clean so we're going to make it a little bit dirty now i'm kind of wondering how many other movies did um did they use the same model in die hard Just remember they were talking mostly with walkie talkies Where's my boy props to history? I need him to find out how many props have been reused on the same movies. Some of it's for, I think, shits and giggles too. Like the same JVC camcorder that was used in Back to the Future was the model they chose uh, for season two of Stranger Things. When Bob... Uh, was filming. He was using, just so happened to be, a red and black model JVC from circa 1985, about when uh, Back to the Future occurred. I'm sure the prop department was like, oh yeah, we're, we're totally going to use this for exactly that reason. All right, we're gonna make this logo a little dirty. I've got a mostly dry brush. Yeah, that white was too white. We needed to make it a little dirty. Dirty it up just a little bit, muted slightly. All right, so. There we go. Oh, that is awesome. Ray, I found him. He's looking right at me, Ray. <laughs> I love this. This is awesome. Oh my God. That. So online eBay, probably about 90 bucks minimum. Uh, we just built this thing for probably a couple bucks worth of uh, 3D filament, and I think I co it cost me about five bucks for the 3D model. So, in all, uh, absolutely cheap as cheap as shit. And uh, it ended up getting me this huge. In order to find all the uh, the right size screws. Uh, about 20 bucks on Amazon got me this thing and I needed one spring. So now I've got an entire box full of compression springs and expansion springs. So we've got plenty of parts to make more stuff later. And that's the, that's the thing is, yeah, that's, um, uh, it's hard to find the tiny, the tiny parts you need. But if you've got an assortment pack, 
then it's a hell of a lot easier. All right, paint's dry. We're, we'll leave it at that. Um, I think this is good enough. I'm not sure what else to do to weather this. I think what I'll do is... Honestly, uh, let's do this. We've got... <clears throat> This is the bin of special effects. So we've got all kinds of good stuff in here. We've got bentonite clay. Yeah, let's do that. Um, it's been dropped in the dirt a few times. So this is a bag of clay. This is uh, essentially, it's called Fuller's Earth. Look at that big cloud of dust coming off of it. Um, so basically, we're just going to pretend this thing's been dropped in the dirt a little bit. And whatever sticks, sticks. And we'll just chalk it up. <laughs> chalk it. Um, to, that's exactly what it's... What has happened. It's very dusty now. So when somebody takes out an old musty book in the forbidden library of whatever movie and they blow the dust off of it, it's this stuff. Fun fact, it's basically kitty litter. It's one of the components in kitty litter as well as numerous cosmetics. So, um, Bentonite clay, Fuller's Earth. Hopefully, I've got that right. <clears throat> All kind of the same thing. So that that worked a bit. It it doesn't look quite as black as it did before. I think what I might what I might do. Um, let's do this. Uh, I don't think there's because this is mostly plastic. Because this would be a plastic product, not exactly something that is truly metallic, I can't do, um, yeah. I can't make it look like it's got um, wear marks. So usually you can hit it with a little bit of, um, oh, what's it called? Rub and buff. Oh my God, yeah. The um, rub and buff is a product that I didn't know about until uh, watching videos from Adam Savage and him weathering stuff. And you just you sort of gloss right over the edges of... Uh, items that would normally be like have be metallic underneath and it kind of uh, it kind of gives way to making it look like the paint has been stripped away um, just you know through wear and so you see the metal underneath but this would be this would be a plastic product So we're just going to pretend, we're going to go with the idea that this thing has been through some stuff. So we got a little bit of uh, brown, black. And we're just going to, look at that, just sort of muddy it up. Just, just a hint. Look at that. So this is, this is definitely, it's been through some stuff. Let's assume that, you know, whatever these guys use to make their proton packs and wherever they were able to purchase their secondhand products, 
was not exactly was not exactly new. It was pretty much pre-owned. Let's assume that. So if we make that assumption, we can kind of muddy up. Yeah, we can make some of these these screws look a little dingier than they are. This is the sign of a, a good weathering, I think. When the paper towel comes off looking just nasty. Take it on, put it on, take it off. Yeah, sometimes you take off a little too much. But what you're left with, once you get through all the uh, layers of watered down paint, actually. Put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off, and eventually you'll have just enough, just enough residue. Look at that, That's, that looks dirty. seen some things man whether it's ectoplasm especially right here I think they'd be pressing on this button so we need quite a bit of Quite a bit here. Just look grimy. Yeah. Think about it. You're holding the side here. Where would your fingers go? You'd be gripping the side. And your fingers have been, who knows? about where it's been, where you're holding it. And I think, yeah, look at that. So that's about where your fingers would be. It'd be a little grimier than usual, right through there. Right along that edge. In fact, I think that side's gonna get a bit more than anything else. Yeah, it's been wiped off. Drop it in the dirt. Oh crap, ghost scared the crap out of me. I dropped my walkie talkie, pick it up again. Yeah, so we're gonna right <sighs> dab it on wipe it off I don't do too much on the top that looks good. 
30. Well, here we go. Here's a good. How much grime is going to end up on this thing right where the antenna meets the body? And how, look how difficult it is for me to wipe it down just to begin with. So you can wipe this thing off as much as you want. There's still going to be some crud stuck down in there. Same with these uh, little thing bits on the top. Right at the top, right where the antenna meets. You're gonna clean it off as best you can, but you're not gonna get all those crevices, come on. Who the hell cares? Again, we're gonna hit that logo a little bit. It was a little too pristine white. There's been some dirt that's collected in there. Let's put a little down in there and wipe it off the top. God, look at that. Right up in the corner. Sorry, that was some fuzz. But yeah, that looks a lot better. It looks better because it's dirty. Oh, the little battery door down here. Would you hold it? Yeah, you'd have your thumb up here. Had a little bit of a paint warp, uh, paint drip on the front right through here. So I think if we try to get a little bit of this in here, kind of hide that, hide the crimes. Yeah, that's wet right now, but I don't let it dry. Yeah. I'll tell you where the dirt wouldn't come off is right smack in the middle of these screws right down in there sure we can wipe it off the edge it'll be shiny on the edges but the insides that's where the dirt collects we want those insides of those sockets to be dirty oh, there we go i think we're good not too much just enough dirt and grime to make it feel like yeah you've grabbed this thing Got your fingerprints all over it. Dirty hands. God, this is light. So plastic and wood, liquid rubber, a couple of uh, M3 screws, a spring. We're good. Sorry, I keep looking. Looking at myself, camera's over here. All right, so there we go. So we've got the uh, walkie-talkie, it'll go on the belt. Next thing to do is a, is a holster. All right, that's it for now.